The Statue of Gudea. Gudea was king of the Sumerian city-state of Lagash around the 22nd century BCE. After 200 years of servitude to Akkadian overlords, the Sumerians gained a measure of freedom when northern tribes called the Gudeans started raiding the Akkadians. It is in this window of opportunity that Gudea ruled. Sumer was politically in decline, but this period is dubbed by some as the golden age for the Sumerian arts because of the artifacts of great artistic quality that have been discovered. Gudea was known to be a shepherd king. The title shepherd king was often used by Sumerian rulers as a way to distinguish themselves from neighboring cultures. In Egypt, for example, the king was regarded as a god. Such kings would lord over their subjects. In Sumer, however, kings tended to depict themselves as servants of the people. Shepherds tend to the flock and protect them from predators. As such, the rulers in Sumer saw themselves as herders of men. The rulers would take care of his subjects and protect them. In return, these subjects would willingly give their allegiance to their ruler. Gudea, however, took this concept a step further. He refused the title of Lugal, king, and instead adopted the title of Ensi, governor. The Ensi was subservient to the Lugal. Given that Gudea was the highest man in power, some believe that he chose the title Ensi because he saw himself not as a king, but as a servant of the god Ningirsu, a god of law, farming, and hunting. Many inscriptions have been discovered where Gudea details construction projects, including numerous temples, to this deity. Gudea was concerned for issues of social justice and the social welfare of his people. Both in the steels and the statues that have remained, it's interesting to note that Gudea resembles a priest more than he does a king. The garments he wears, the bald head and clean-shaven face, point to characteristics more common to priests than kings. We can see in Gudea how the role of high priest and king was merged into one. We also know that during this period, Gudea had an active trade life with the Mediterranean coast, specifically the regions encompassing modern Syria, Lebanon, and Israel. Much of the cedar wood and stone used in his construction projects were brought from this area. By now you may be realizing where this is going. There are some unavoidable similarities in play between the biblical Melchizedek and Gudea of Lagash. Statue of Gudea of Lagash. Melchizedek seems to reflect the philosophy of Sumerian rulership. Much like Gudea, in Melchizedek we see fusion between the roles of king and high priest who rules for the welfare and peace of his people. The name Melchizedek itself means King of Righteousness or Justice.